This is insane. Earlier this fall, I spent a month traveling through Europe. Heidelberg, Bodensee, Munich, Bern, Zurich, Lugano, Besançon, Heidelberg again, Gemona del Friuli, and Venice. So I'm traveling through Germany, and this is on the agenda of today. <gasps> That's insane! No, no, no! I am really stressed right now. I don't know what's gonna happen. There is so much beauty that you can't see. And there is so much truth in how she's built. Yeah. <laughs> so, this is actually hard. Okay, let's go. Okay, let's go. Okay, let's go. <laughs> we will arrive at our destination in about one hour and 54 minutes. No, 53. Anyway, another good flight. <laughs> After I spent my summer in the Isle of Man, I went to a beautiful city in Germany called Heidelberg to see my friend Lene, and from there I went on a road trip with a few friends to a lake called Bodensee. It wasn't exactly the most luxurious van life aesthetic on your Pinterest board type of situation. Oh, this is disgusting! He's sweating! <laughs> but we still had a great time. <laughs> we camped in this apple orchard in the middle of absolutely nowhere, and it was gorgeous, and I've never done something like that before, so it was really cool for me. And yeah, I had a really good time. We did the road trip for, I think, four days. And to be honest, I don't really have that much else to say other than that it was really fun and I had a good time. And that, and Germany, Germany has so many little towns that aren't really famous at all, but are just so, so pretty and yeah, I really like that about Germany. It's just like all these like little random towns and villages are just so pretty and aesthetic and it looks like it comes out from a picture book and it was really lovely. But other than that, I don't really have like deep, interesting thoughts about it to be honest. I just had a good time. After the road trip, we went back to Heidelberg. I spent about two days with Lena again and then after that, I went to Munich to see my good friend, Hannah. I got it. <laughs> Next stop was Bern, Switzerland, which is the capital of Switzerland, but my friend Joy lived in a place that wasn't really Bern, and so this ended up being the only picture I took in the city. Ta-da! I've actually been to Switzerland three years ago uh, to Zurich to see friends, but this time around I got to see the stunning nature of this country, and it was just, just phenomenal. Joy took me on beautiful walking trails to uh, the waterfall that Sherlock Holmes, quote unquote, died at and even to the famous Jungfrau which was especially so exciting because Jungfrau was definitely a dream destination for me. So this is my friend Joy. Hello. So today we're starting from Lauterbrunnen, that's where we are right now. We are taking the train to Bengen, it's a car free village. From there we're taking the, uh, the gondola up to the Manlichen and we're walking over to the Lini Scheidek, which is over here, with the wonderful panorama of Eigenmann and Jungfrau yep. um, before us. Then we're taking the train down back to Wengen and Lauterbrunnen, and that will be yep. a trip for today. Like, I was just so impressed by the mountains by the Alps of this country. Once in a while I would just stop mid-conversation, straight up interrupt my friend and just be like, oh my goodness, the view. But yeah, we didn't end up going up the actual Jungfrau. We stopped like midway through, but we ultimately decided not to go because it was so expensive. And there was a certain part of me that had to let go of the idea of, oh, but that's the classic train on the postcards. Maybe I should do it. But when I stopped to actually think about it, I realized that I was already so so happy with the halfway experience and honestly the view's probably better than on top because Jungfrau Joch is in the view anyways and so that's why I didn't end up doing it and I am telling you all this just so I can show you a bunch of the pretty footage that I took and it's working.
And then next stop was Zurich. I stayed in my friend Kiara's place. But yeah, this time in Zurich, it was a really weird one because I didn't do that much sightseeing because I felt like I'd done it three years ago already. And so it was more just like co-living with my friend Kiara. We would go on runs together. I would go to her uni together. Um, I would go to see my other friends, but the highlight was definitely on the weekend where we went on a hike to a place near Lugano. So from Zurich, we came to Lugano, Lugano. by train, mm -hmm. and then we're gonna take a bus for about 20 minutes mm -hmm. to where Kiara's family, extended family owns a uh, house there. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna hike up the mountain tomorrow, but in the meantime, we're making a little stop at Lugano because it is Good to gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> a bit windy. A bit windy. Oh my goodness, I really wish I had a camera. This like the quality, it's not doing it justice. This is insane. But I know what side it says. If you look on your right side, it's this. We are strong, independent, sporty. Sporty, <laughs> sportive, sporty woman. Throughout this gap year, once in a while, I get this feeling of uh, what the hell am I doing here? And it's this specific terrifying feeling and the only way I can explain it is that it feels panicky and it feels like you're almost drowning for a second of just like what am I doing here and then I would tell myself Emmy shut up brain stop thinking that and then I would be okay and I talked about it with my friend Hato on the phone because she's doing something like me basically but in Asia and she knew exactly what I was talking about and so that's why I'm sharing it with you guys because maybe uh, some of you know the feeling. She said that I think we're wired to to be comfortable in routine, to be comfortable in where you come from. So when you're in a context that's just so entirely different of where you come from, then maybe that's your brain just panicking for a second, like freaking out for a second. Absolutely shattered. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely shattered, but mission accomplished. Emotional so damage. <laughs> I don't think I took a single footage of Zurich, honestly. No, you didn't. No. Okay, so guys, this is Zurich. Beautiful, beautiful Zurich. This if is it's Zurich, don't, maybe it's burned. No, maybe it's they clear. can't tell, you, you know? can't really tell, yeah. <laughs> I then popped by France for two days to say hi to my host family from three years ago. I didn't film anything because basically I didn't want to shove a camera in front of my host family. But my host family is absolutely lovely. They don't speak a word of English, so I was a little bit nervous before I went there, but I somehow survived with my French. So after France, I was supposed to go to Munich again uh, to see Hannah again because she was supposed to have a few days off and I needed a place to stay. But then a little bit of a crisis happened. I'm at the station TGV. And I'm heading to Munich today. I'm gonna stop in Frankfurt. And then after that, I'm gonna head to Munich. However, that was a plan. However, I got a text from my friend yesterday evening saying that her and her mom have COVID. Initially, she was like, it would be probably be okay because it was planned and like I already have the ticket to go to Munich and from Munich to the next place. So she was like, yeah, you can probably stay. But then this morning she was like, her parents aren't happy with it. So I can't go to Munich. I can if I want to, but I don't have a place to stay. So I'm a little bit stressed right now. I am really stressed right now. I have one friend in Germany who lives close-ish to Frankfurt that who I'm comfortable enough to ask if I can go to her place tonight. And she lives with her parents, so I have absolutely no idea if that'll be all right with her. And she's not picking up at the moment, so I can't really do anything. I just have to wait and see and call her and see. So there was a few hours of waiting of not knowing what I was gonna do, where I was gonna stay in Germany, for God's sake, I don't even know the language there. But after praying about it, I started to feel much more peaceful about it. It's not the end of the world. I'll survive this. It just means that I'm going to lose money. It just means that I might have to cut my trip short or something like that. It's not the end of the world. And when I thought of it like that, I felt much better. And that's when Lena called me back and she said that I am absolutely welcome to stay with her. So 
it all worked out and they just like integrated me in their life and yeah honestly because i had already done all the touristy stuff in heidelberg i honestly just like lived life with lenny so i'm traveling through germany and this is on the agenda of today what were you doing? Yeah, yeah, what were you doing? Leave the arena. Okay. Children. <laughs> we're not children. No, we're not children, but still. It was Exploitation? Kind of... oh. <laughs> <laughs> I am literally leaving right now, but this is my friend Lene. leaving. Who <laughs> saved my ass. Fly <laughs> world. Love you. Oh no! Oh no! That's my train! Oh no, no, no! no. 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 <laughs> And then after Switzerland, I went to Italy to see my very good friend Mauricio. This is my wonderful friend Mauricio, who I met on the Isle of Man. He's from Italy. He was one of my bestest friends. Ordinary to get what? In the Isle of Man. Yeah. I'm gonna marry Amy. No. <laughs> but no one marries. He, so say, he says that about so every bad. woman in his life. <laughs> yeah. My friend Mauri is from a place called Gemona del Friuli. Um, in the north of Italy, which is almost like close to Austria. And he showed me around all these little beautiful Italian cities and made me eat everything Italian. Literally, the pasta that I had on the first night, I still think about it sometimes. And thank you so much, Marty, because that was just, ugh an incredible experience. And also what was really special was that while I was in his hometown, he gave me some private tours of these two different museums. It was a Monday, so it was closed, but he was friends with the people who owned it. And they came to open the keys of the doors just for us. And Modi and uh, this other wonderful guy who didn't speak a word of English or Spanish, but Modi was translating everything to me and he gave us an entire tour of these little museums. And I felt like I was in a movie or something like, who does that? That was just incredible. And the cherry on top was for the last two days, we did a uh, trip to Venice. It really just looked like all the pictures that I've seen before of Venice and it was just so so beautiful and I kept on thinking like the fact that somebody built this place not thinking that it would become such a huge tourist attraction in the future like not trying to please or impress the entire world but that the fact that they just made a city like this just because is insane it, like to make it so beautiful so pretty like i kept on thinking that's just fascinating but we didn't say anything i just think that she looked at me what she say in italian non siamo ancora morti questa non è una città museo we are not dead yet this is not a museum city and it just uh, hit me I don't know. Like her pain hit me, you know. And on one side, there is so much beauty that in her pain he cannot see. And there is so much truth in how she feels. Right, she had in, the, in her eyes was inspirational. The pride she had in her eyes. Yeah, there was no shame. You know, like she knew she was gonna be like an old lady bragging to young people but she said it anyway you know it just was in her heart <laughs> so you know it's not like a white and black thing yeah, yeah, exactly. it's just a mm. how complicated is this word is it like it makes you feel like you cannot really judge things like it's powerless it's, uh, I don't know why that gesture is doing so much in my heart sometimes my in one club exit right my heart is weird Emotions. I don't know. 
This Europe trip was definitely something that I'll remember for a long, long time. And I'm incredibly grateful to all my friends who were so generous with their time and energy to show me around their cities. And I really had so much fun. But I was also kind of glad at the end that I didn't make it any longer than a month because I noticed that after a while it starts to feel a bit aimless when you're only doing touristy stuff. And I would honestly prefer to stay in one place and live there and have or to be involved in some kind of project or something like that and live life there to be able to like really understand what that place is and after having such a rich experience of that um, in the Isle of Man for two whole months it felt just way too short only being able to go to each place for just a few days or max a week at a time and, and so that was my month-long trip in Europe and right now I am in none of those countries I'm in a completely different place and I'm not gonna tell you guys because it's gonna be a surprise for the next video and if you guys can guess where I am now that would be uh, pretty surprising actually. Thank you so much for watching this video until the end. I hope that you liked it and if you like this video then I am 100% sure that you would love the Isle of Man video. And again thanks so much for watching until the end. I'll see you guys in the next video. Ciao!